Now y'all gather round and listen close. This here's a tale that'll chill your bones, straight from the heart of the mountain's shadow. Nestled in the cradle of the peaks, there lies a quaint little town, as peaceful as a summer's morn. But beneath the tranquility there lurks a mystery as old as the hills themselves. You see, these parts are home to a legend, a shadowy figure that walks on two legs known to the folks hereabouts as Bigfoot. The whispers of the townsfolk speak of a hulking beast, a guardian of the mountains, as elusive as a wisp of smoke, a creature of myth and lore that has been the stuff of local folklore for generations. And in this calm before the storm, a band of hunters, brave and bold, are gearing up for a showdown of epic proportions. As the sun dipped low, the hunters knelt, their hearts pounding like wild drums, ready to face the mountain's guardian. These ain't your everyday hunters, mind you. These folks are made of tougher stuff, born and bred in the shadow of the beast. They've got grit in their teeth and the wild in their veins. They come from all walks of life, yet share a common thread, a burning desire to uncover the truth about the mountain guardian, the legendary Bigfoot. There's old man Jenkins, a retired ranger who spent half his life patrolling these woods. Then there's the Sullivan siblings, known far and wide for their tracking skills. And let's not forget Maria, a wildlife biologist driven by scientific curiosity. Each carries their own arsenal of tools and tricks, from infrared cameras to plaster casting kits, all aimed at capturing proof of the elusive creature's existence. They've studied the tales, combed through the evidence, and now they're ready. With a fire in their eyes and courage in their hearts, they ventured into the heart of the mountain. The night was as black as a crow's feather, and the wind whispered tales of the beast. The mountain was awake, and so was Bigfoot. In the heart of the wilderness, where the shadows danced and the moonlight barely reached, the hunters felt it, the unmistakable presence of the legendary creature. The hairs on their necks stood up like pine trees in the forest. It was a sensation like no other, a primal instinct, triggering a mix of fear and thrill. They spotted footprints, larger than any man's, leading deeper into the forest. The ground was disturbed, branches broken, and the scent of something wild lingered in the air. The signs were clear as the mountain stream. The beast was near, perhaps watching them from the shadows. The hunters moved, their steps muffled by the carpet of pine needles beneath their feet. Their hearts pounded like the rhythm of an ancient drum echoing the adrenaline-charged silence of the night. Every rustle of leaves, every snap of a twig, magnified in the stillness of the wilderness, heightened their senses. The mountain, a silent witness for centuries, seemed to hold its breath as they ventured further into its heart. The wind, the trees, the very air around them seemed to whisper warnings and tales of the creature. The tension was palpable like an electric charge in the air before a storm. The anticipation built up like a pressure cooker ready to explode at the slightest provocation. The hunters knew they were walking a tightrope between bravery and folly. They were in the beast's territory now, playing by its rules. As they moved deeper into the wilderness, a sound cut through the silence. Not a rustle, not a whisper, but a roar. A roar so powerful, so primal, it shook the very core of their beings. It echoed off the mountain walls, reverberating through the forest and rattling the hunters to their bones. A roar echoed through the pines, shaking the very earth beneath their feet. There was no doubt about it. They had found the beast. Hold your horses now. The chase was on and it was nothing short of a wild dance between man and beast. Our hunters, fueled by adrenaline and determination, found themselves in a high-stakes game of cat and mouse with the elusive creature. The forest transformed into a natural obstacle course, its wild terrain testing the mettle of our brave hunters. There were close calls, moments where the beast's massive form was just a shadowy blur amidst the dense underbrush. But each time, it slipped through their fingers like a phantom, leaving behind only the echoing sounds of its passage. The hunters, however, were not deterred. They were seasoned trackers, well-versed in the language of the wild. Each broken branch, each displaced stone, was a breadcrumb that brought them closer to their quarry. 
They maneuvered through the wilderness with a strategic precision, their every step calculated, their every breath measured. The chase was a thrilling symphony of primal instincts. The hunters, akin to the early pioneers, relied on their survival skills and intuition. The creature, a testament to nature's raw power and mystery, used its innate knowledge of the terrain to its advantage. At times, the hunters found themselves mere feet away from the creature, its musky scent filling the air, its hulking form barely visible in the dappled sunlight. But like a master illusionist, it would disappear into the wilderness, its thunderous footsteps fading into the distance. The chase was a test of endurance, a battle of wits and wills. It was a dance as wild and unpredictable as the mountain winds. The hunters, despite the odds, refused to back down. Their perseverance was admirable, their courage commendable. Through the dense thicket, across the bubbling creeks, up the steep inclines, the hunters pursued the beast. The wilderness, usually a place of tranquility, was alive with their frantic footsteps and the creature's echoing roars. The beast was crafty, but the hunters were relentless. The mountain echoed with the sounds of their deadly dance. Time seemed to slow as they stood face to face with the legend itself. It was time for the final showdown. The tension was palpable, hanging heavy in the air like a storm cloud. The hunters, a motley crew of brave souls, stood their ground. Their hearts pounded in their chests, adrenaline coursing through their veins like wildfire. They were no longer just hunters, they were warriors, standing on the precipice of the unknown, ready to face the beast that had haunted their dreams and fueled their nightmares. The legend, the myth, the mountain guardian, Bigfoot, towered over them, an imposing figure of raw power and primal energy. It was as if the creature was a part of the mountain itself, its spirit intertwined with the ancient trees and the rugged terrain. With a guttural roar that echoed through the valley, Bigfoot charged. The earth seemed to shake beneath their feet, but the hunters stood firm. Their determination was unyielding, their resolve forged in the fires of their pursuit. They fought, not with weapons, but with their courage. Each dodge, each evasion, each daring maneuver was a testament to their tenacity. They danced a deadly dance with the beast, a ballet of bravery and beastly might. The night was filled with the sounds of their battle, the roars of the creature, the shouts of the hunters, and the rustling of leaves as they moved through the forest. But as the first rays of dawn pierced the night, a change swept over the battlefield. The beast's roars grew weaker, its charges less fierce. The hunters, though battered and bruined, stood tall. Their spirit was unbroken, their will indomitable. Finally, with a roar that was more a whimper, Bigfoot retreated. The mountain guardian, once a terrifying force of nature, turned and vanished into the wilderness from whence it came. As the dawn broke, the mountain fell silent. The hunters, forever marked by their encounter with the beast, stood victorious.